In this video we'll talk about a powerful new control in the UX component in version 12. You can see here that we have a UX component and we have a tree control. Uh, so the tree control is a new type of control that you can place on the UX component. So you can see here that here's our tree and we can expand um, a branch on the tree and click on a uh, node in the tree or a leaf in the tree and then have an event handler that fires. So let's go back now and take a look at uh, how we created this tree. So let's uh, go back to design mode and uh, I'll just start out by adding a brand new tree over here. So we'll go here and we'll call this uh, um, tree 2 and then we can go ahead now and start defining the uh, properties of this tree. So uh, we can specify how the uh, tree will be populated and you've got uh, a choice of uh, using the tree data genie where you use a, a builder to help you build the uh, items in the tree, uh, JSON which we'll cover a little later and then XBasic where you can actually write an XBasic function that will generate the tree uh, dynamically. So let's start out with the uh, tree data genie so we'll open up the genie and now we can go and build our tree so let's go here and just start adding in items to our tree so we'll type in alpha, beta, gamma and then under alpha we'll put um, some uh, child uh, items so we'll go here and type in say A1, A2, A3 and then let's go under beta and type in say B1, B2, B3 and then under B1 we'll go here and we'll type in BB1, BB2, BB3 so we've defined a tree now the tree can be arbitrarily complex and when we click OK the tree has been filled in for us and um, now we can go to each item in the tree and define properties so we can go here and define the uh, collapsed icon, the expanded icon and also the um, on click event then also you can see that each item in the tree has um, security associated with it so you can say that this item can only be seen by someone in the uh, sales group and if you put security on a branch then um, if that uh, uh, user is not in the right group then not only is um, the branch taken out but all of the child uh, items are also removed at runtime so uh, by putting security on a branch you can affect um, a big portion um, of the tree and then uh, when you're building the tree you can go to any item in the tree and either uh, demote it or promote it so it's very easy to um, build the tree here let's just go and fix that typo over there so from this tree definition now you can see if you want to see what the actual JSON looks like that drives this tree you can press the uh, show JSON button and you can see here is actually the JSON definition um, of that tree um, so if you want to use the option to specify JSON um, yourself you can use this as a starting point so anyway so now we've defined our tree and then let's just go here to say for example item this alpha 3 and define an event handler so I can go here now and I can just type in um, alert you clicked on a3 and now we've defined an event handler for that particular leaf in the tree but uh, in practice you're going to want to create event handlers that do much more complex things than just say an alert you might want to have an event handler that opens up uh, another grid or prints a report or something like that so when you go to create the event handler here you can use these options here to use action javascript so uh, by using these two options uh, define action JavaScript and run action JavaScript you can make your event handlers do um, arbitrarily complex um, actions so let's go now uh, to run mode and look at our tree so here's the tree that we just defined you can see that we can uh, expand all the branches and when we click on A3 you can see that we get the event handler so what we've shown here are the basics of creating a simple tree and um, in the next video we'll show some of the other options uh, for the tree. Thanks very much for watching. So we're continuing our discussion now on the new tree control uh, in the UX component and uh, we've discussed how you can define the items in the tree using the tree data genie so let's now talk about how you can uh, define the items in the tree using um, a JSON string 
that defines the uh, tree uh, items. So we'll choose uh, JSON uh, over there now and then we'll open up the uh, JSON editor over here and uh, we can now type in the JSON directly or we can start out with some sample JSON. So let's go ahead and insert some sample JSON over there and go and run it. Now we can see now we have a tree. Uh, when we expand uh, this item over here, the icon changes from the closed icon to the open icon and then here we have the um, items uh, that are children of the first um, uh, branch and then we've also got a image uh, on the first item over here. So let's go back now and uh, examine the, uh, um, the JSON. So um, I just uh, should point out that when we click on uh, A3 we get an event. So let's go back now and look at the JSON. So you can see here's the JSON. So the first item in the tree is A and it has a collapsed icon and an expanded icon and it has children. Then uh, the uh, pattern repeats. The first child has HTML, uh, an icon, uh, so it doesn't have collapsed and expanded icons because it, this is a, uh, a leaf uh, node, so therefore it just has an icon entry. And then here's my on-click event handler, which is a uh, JavaScript function that gets called. So there's the JavaScript function that gets called when the user clicks on A1. So if I wanted to go and modify this in some way, I'll go here and type in uh, A modified and then if I wanted to go for example and change the on click for B so I'll go here and type in B2 and then make that B2 and now let's say I'd like to add in an icon for B2 as well so I'll just copy um, that icon over there copy this now because this is um, we're typing pure JSON here there needs to be a comma after that item over there a comma over there but no comma there because this is the last uh, entry. So now B2 is going to have an image on it as well. So let's go now and uh, run this. So here we go, run this, and there's uh, B2 with this image on it, and there's our event handler. So you can see that by modifying the JSON directly, uh, you might find that a more efficient way of building your tree than uh, using the uh, tree genie. But yes, there's also a third way of uh, defining the tree, and that's uh, using XBasic. So with uh, XBasic, you can create highly dynamic trees where the actual tree definition is constructed on the fly by executing an uh, XBasic script. So let's uh, change now from JSON to XBasic and now we need to specify the name of the XBasic function that's going to be used to generate the uh, JSON definition for the tree. So let's go here and click the smart field and up comes my uh, builder so I can type in the name of the XBasic function that I'd like to call so I'll just call it say XB1. Now we haven't yet defined um, XB1 but what I can do here is click this uh, hyperlink to get some sample code. So this is the uh, sample code that's going to be uh, that I can copy and I'm going to just take this uh, um, sample code and then copy it to the clipboard and now uh, go to the XBasic functions uh, section um, over here, uh, paste in the code and now define my function. So let me pause now and pick this up in the next video. So let's go back now to this uh, XBasic function and we can see here that in the uh, comments in the function it tells us how to go about uh, creating the function. It's telling us that there are, there are two approaches that you can use in your XBasic um, code. The first is to uh, write the XBasic directly that creates an XBasic array um, and then when you want to go to nested items in the tree you create subarrays and then you call the uh, var to JSON function which takes an XBasic uh, dot variable uh, and converts it into a uh, JSON object. Now this approach here you can if you just uh, sort of read through the comments I'm not going to um, uh, read through the code line by line in this video but uh, it does explain how you can use uh, XBasic to slowly build up the uh, items in the tree. But um, the uh, the other approach is to use a built-in helper function called um, tree text to JSON. So this XBasic function 
makes it very easy to generate the JSON. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to start out by just uncommenting this code, running it and then coming back and explaining it. So here we go and now let's uh, uh, save this away, uh, run it and we can see here's our XBasic uh, has generated this tree over there. So let's go back now and take a look at the uh, function. So the function basically takes a uh, CRLF delimited string of data. So here's my data. And then uh, uh, items in the uh, this uh, uh, CRLF delimited string are uh, tab indented. So this is a tab character over there. So you can see there. So I basically build the tree in a very visual way and I specify the label for each item on the tree um, in this outline format over there and then for each item in the tree I can put on the same line uh, using JSON syntax all of the additional properties that I would like for that item so for example for the first item alpha I've specified a JSON object that has icon and sets that to my icon and on click and sets that to you clicked on alpha. So if I were to go now and copy this for example to um, that uh, entry sub alpha 2 there and change that to my icon 2 which is not which is that doesn't really exist so I'm not going to see um, any icon there but I'll change that to um, sub alpha uh, 2 if I now go and uh, run this, the XBasic function runs and then I go there and I click over there and there's the icon which uh, is not showing up because it doesn't um, actually exist um, uh, yet. But the, the point here is that this XBasic function uh, can be arbitrarily complex. It can uh, retrieve data from a, from a database, etc. And using this very sort of simple and understandable syntax here, the, you can then create a string and then feed it into this um, tree text to JSON function which will actually generate the fully formed uh, JSON definition that you can use to populate your uh, tree. So there are th three different methods that we've shown here for populating the tree. Uh, what we would expect is that in most cases the tree will be populated using the tree data genie um, uh, which allows you to define the tree at design time and then control some of the items in the tree through server-side show hide expressions and through security groups but for more advanced users who want the full power of XBasic the ability to create the tree definition on the fly using XBasic is a very powerful option so I hope you've enjoyed this. What we've shown here is this very powerful new tree control in the UX component for version 12. Thanks very much for watching.